Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm Ashley and this is Martin Midlife Misadventures. I'm coming to you from Mom's Kitchen and we are gonna bake that bread in an electric skillet. We've got two skillets to choose from. I'm gonna show you and please watch to the end, all right? Because I'm gonna give you some pointers, some things I would have done differently with this bread. I am now used to baking at 8,000 feet. Well, now we're below 500. So there needs to be a few little adjustments to this recipe, nothing real big, but let me tell you, you, you can bake this in this in the electric skillet on your stovetop in your camp oven in a regular oven absolutely any way you want to bake this bread you could bake this bread Amy will do our taste test at the end so let's get started we are gonna bake bread in an electric skillet we have two here we're gonna choose from I'm still in Arizona so we cannot use mine but we're gonna use one of these old one this one is from 1953 mom still has the original booklet with it and uses this for her fried her fried chicken she says it makes the best fried chicken even 70 years later and then we have a little of a newer one but you can tell it's a sunbeam I think it's a sunbeam. No, it's a Faberware, but this is very old as well, but again, in perfect condition. And I think how we're going to determine which one we end up using is going to be based on the rise we get out of our yeast. So let's look at our ingredients. We're going to need some sugar, some yeast, some oil, just regular vegetable oil, some all-purpose flour, some salt, any salt of your choice, and you could use milk or water for this recipe. I have one cup of milk in this little saucepan and to it I'm going to add three teaspoons of sugar. Just three teaspoons. We are gonna heat this up. We are not gonna boil it. We do not want this to exceed 105 degrees because this is what we're gonna start our yeast in. Now that this is warm, it's just, I've just taken the chill off of it. I'm gonna go ahead and add our yeast into there and we're gonna give it a quick stir and I'm gonna let it sit for about two minutes. In our mixing bowl, we are going to sift three cups of flour. I highly recommend you always sift your flour. It just makes for a way silkier, more delicious dough. Sprinkle in your little half a teaspoon of salt. Let's make a little well in the center of this flour. It's been two minutes and look at this yeast. You see the bubble we have on that? It looks beautiful. So we're gonna dump this in the center and three tablespoons of oil. I'm gonna start mixing it by hand, and once I get it into a nice dough form, I'm gonna start kneading it by hand. I'm getting ready to start mixing it by hand. You can see how it's kinda of shaggy, but I can feel that it's very moist, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to just fold this onto itself very gently because I don't have the strength to knead and knead and knead and we'll do that for a couple of minutes. About 30 seconds in and this is what it's looking like now. It's still kind of shaggy. Now I'm used to baking at a higher elevation now and I feel like this might be a little dry but I'm going to keep going and I'll let you know if I add anything else to it. I kneaded this for about two minutes. That's all I'm gonna do. I did not add any more liquid or anything to it, but what I am going to do is add a little drop of oil, just a drop, like that. And then we'll just kinda rub it on top, flip it over, and just try to coat the whole ball with a little bit of oil and you can cover this with a tea towel, you could cover it with plastic. I think I'm just going to take the lid off of this and set it right on there and let it proof inside here for about an hour or two depending on what kind of rise we end up getting. All right, let's show them the bread. It's been an hour and a half. We've more than doubled in size on our bread, so that's fantastic. Now we're going to pull it out. It's a nice piece of dough. I'm just going to work it a little bit. I'm not going to add any flour to this. I don't think it's necessary. I'm just going to get it into a nice ball and we're going to put it inside our pan. That's all I'm doing. Okay. 
and we're going to let this rise inside the pan for about 30 minutes. Okay, see that? Now, bring it over to the pan. We decided this is the pan we're going to use in case we do end up with a tall rise on it. The only thing you need to do is take a little flour, just a little. Just a little. This dough is a little dry. Just a little flour. And we're going to set it right in the pan, just like that. We're going to let it rise for 30 minutes, and then we'll cook it. All right, let's take a peek. Oh, look at how beautiful that is. And just so you know, because everyone wants to make sure, see, it does not stick. This is not going to stick whatsoever to this pan. So what we're going to do now is we're going to turn it on to 350 degrees with the bread in it. You, I do not preheat it. Set it for 350, put the lid on it, and we're going to do the first half at 10 minutes. Okay, our first 10 minutes is up. And let's take a look at this. It's looking perfect. We're going to flip it. Oh, we've got a little browning, but not too bad. Oh, it looks delicious. We're going to cook this for another 8 minutes, and then we're going to turn it off. All right, eight more minutes has passed, and we're going to flip our bread and take a look at it. Look at that. It looks, it looks like a giant English muffin right now, but we're going to go ahead and flip it back over, and we're going to let it sit in this pan with the lid on. I'm going to turn it off and let it sit in there for about five minutes. All right, we're gonna open this, and we're gonna flip it over. Look at that, doesn't it look like a giant English muffin? It does. How funny. All right, I'm gonna cut a slice. I'm just gonna cut a little piece off the edge here. It's hot. But I want to show inside. You see that? Delicious. Let's put some hot butter on it. Okay. Uh, not hot butter. Let's put some nice butter on it so you can give it a taste test. It's melting. It's mm -hmm. just melting right in there. Okay, Amy's going in. It's hot, so don't burn your little mouth. Mm. <laughs> is it good? Can right, you taste good. that yeast? I wanted it to be a nice yeasty bread. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is delicious. Look at that. You like the crunchy bits. Mm. Great a little crust on it. Mm-hmm. You want to have some spaghetti with it? Out of this world. All right, friends, how about that bread? It is delicious, but let me tell you what I would have done differently, okay? I'm used to baking my bread now at 8,000 feet in elevation, okay? So there's a couple things I would do differently. Here, we're under 500, so it is a huge difference when baking. The first thing I would have done different is I would not have used the milk. It just tends to make your bread a little bit more dense. I think one cup of water would have been perfect. I also think think you could get away with just using half a packet of yeast, not the whole thing. When I'm at home, I'll use one packet of yeast for three different loaves of bread. You do not need a lot of yeast if your yeast is good, okay? So that's something to consider to bring down the cost. The other thing you could have done with this dough, and I almost did it, was throw one egg into that batter when you're making it. And that dough, oh, it would have a little eggy flavor. It would be a little fluffier. Just an egg can really make a difference in your bread. Those are just some of the things I would have done differently, but it was delicious just the same. And the thing is with bread, it fills your belly, okay guys? It is the most, give us this day our daily bread. It is 
filling and it's something that we all need to learn how to do. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid to bake bread. If you make a mistake, you make a mistake and you just start over. It's something we should all be getting good at. And like I said, you can bake this in your oven, you could bake it on the stovetop, on a camp stove, whatever it is that if you have a camping oven, you could do this in a camping oven, so don't be afraid to give new things a try. I hope you enjoy this video. Please give us a thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe, and we're going to be talking to you really soon. God bless you all.